please welcome to the TEDx San Francisco stage, Reese Jones. Thanks. We, we just heard about a world of technology and uh, uh, advancing changes. And uh, one of the things that I thought would be important to uh, get a sense of is we're not alone in this world. In fact, uh, the majority of life in this world are microbes, and um, microbes are actually a majority of us. And these microbes have a lot of impact on the health of the world and our health, and uh, um, part of this comes from the Human Genome Project, which has been going on for the last 15 years, uh, sequencing the um, three billion letters of our human genome and epigenome. And a uh, project over the last five years has been the Human Microbiome Project. And this is teaching us some new things about um, the insides of, of us. As Daniel mentioned, the technology to do this is getting cheaper and faster enabling us to sequence the genes, not just of the cells in our own body, but the cells that are in and on our body, in our intestine, what we had for lunch, on our body, what we touched. And it turns out that um, even though there's a, a, over a trillion cells in our body of, of human cells, there's over a hundred trillion cells of microbes in us and on us um, as we become adults. Um, so basically, bacteria are us, and we are bacteria, and we're living in a world of bacteria. Uh, half the biomass on the earth, at least, is bacteria, and they're in control. Uh, of the uh, um, genes that are active in our body, our own human uh, uh, genes, there's only about 22,000 uh, genes in our DNA that actually code for proteins that we know about so far. There's the epigenetics, of course, but the microbes in us and on us uh, have uh, 8 million coding genes so that we've discovered so far, and these do a lot of important things, including helping us digest our food and uh, affecting our behavior in some ways. Um, when we're conceived and when we're first born, we're, for the most part, mostly human DNA, but uh, as soon as we um, uh, emerge uh, into the world, our, our bodies are coated with microbes uh, on the external, and as soon as we start to eat, our interior is, is filled with microbes uh, of various kinds, such to the point where we become more or less uh, coated with many, many different kinds of uh, beneficial species of, or, or uh, strains of organisms that uh, both uh, pr protect us and help us um, as an uh, ecosystem of creatures that we think of as ourself. Uh, inside ourself are um, trillions and trillions of microbes. They change as we eat, they change as we grow, um, and they change as we age. And many of these get a bad rap in that uh, they're blamed for specific diseases, in that microbes that are normally on us or in us um, if they get out of whack or out of control, they can cause diseases that can be uh, pretty gnarly. And uh, one of the uh, um, main public perceptions of microbes or bacteria is that they're bad for us. But most of us are bacteria. And bacteria uh, um, themselves have their own kind of social life and interaction. Uh, and uh, Bonnie Brasser gives a great TED talk about this, the um, social life of bacteria and how they communicate with each other. But one of the uh, first inventors of antibiotics is bacteria themselves, where they communicate with each other in a cooperative way most of the time, but occasionally they uh, uh, communicate in an um, aggressive way. The microbiome inside our body and on our body is very complex uh, as an ecosystem. There's fungi and viruses and bacteria and um, many, many kinds of creatures. They communicate amongst themselves. They share resources. They compete for resources, they're interactive with our immune system, they're part of our immune system. They're not unlike uh, the primordial soup, though, that we come from. And in fact, we're like a, a bag of primordial soup uh, carrying these microbes out of the sea and into this audience in the land. Um, the microbes uh, uh, share these resources, as mentioned, but sometimes when they go to war with each other, 
they create antibiotics or chemicals that are intent on, on killing the others. Um, and this is where we discovered antibiotics. But for the most part, they have a very open source, cordial social relationship, exchanging DNA, communicating with each other, um, uh, swapping uh, genes, um, interstitial genes even, using um, uh, bacteriophages and other things to move information. The, uh, but the, the basic community of, of these organisms have moved from the seawater in the primordial soup up onto the land in, in land-dwelling creatures, up into the form of humans. And us humans, all seven billion of us, are actually a, a tiny fraction of the life mass on, on Earth. And these organisms are part of us and our health and how we interact. Um, now, we view ourselves as having free will, and Dan, Dan gives a good TED talk about uh, microbes having free will, and most of us have had the experience of uh, a sneeze being caused by a virus where we think we're in control of our body, but uh, if a tiny little dumb virus can make us sneeze, imagine what they can do to our diet and our health and our relationships. And if the microbial choices of food are different than what our mind tells us, um, we'll have a tendency to eat the kinds of things that the microbes prefer more than what might be healthy for us. As around World War II, when uh, antibiotics as a chemical were invented or discovered as a pill to be used in fighting uh, bacterial infections, along with many other kinds of pills, the, uh, the effect of these has started to have an effect on our overall lifestyle. Inside us is a diverse uh, ecosystem that's relatively complex with lots of different kinds of organisms. But if you put in an antibiotic, a chemical antibiotic, it wipes out a major portion uh, in, with sort of unpredictable effects and turning what might be a very complex uh, imbalanced ecosystem into something much simpler like maybe cows and grass instead of a whole rainforest. Now it's been shown that uh, giving small amounts of antibiotics to farm animals can increase their, their weight and, and mass or in their choices of foods and and make uh, feedstock fatter. Giving small amounts of antibiotics can humans can do similar. So as we feed our family and our pets and ourselves antibiotics, we can be changing our biomass um, and health. Most of these decisions we make ourselves, sometimes we go to doctors to say we need antibiotics. Um, it, sometimes these are a choice, like here's two kids with an earache. You can see 10 days later, they both are, are back to healthy. One of them got an antibiotic, the other didn't. Um, the antibiotic didn't necessarily change the outcome of their earache, but these antibiotics are starting to cause a problem worldwide, as was one of the most serious problems, overuse of antibiotics, that are creating superbugs that are becoming a, a crisis worldwide. And the new discovery of new kinds of antibiotics that are uh, able to stop these is, is dwindling. During this same 30, 40 year period, um, We've increased our appetite for carbohydrates, which has increased an epidemic of obesity um, that uh, uh, it seems as though it's our free will that is doing this, but it may have something to do with our use of antibiotics and our use of uh, uh, food stocks in general, like what foods we choose to make available and our use of uh, pills and medicines um, as part of our health choices. Now, this may be um, something that is just an evolutionary process where we may be evolving to a different kind of bag for carrying a different kind of microorganisms that may prefer uh, sodas and burgers uh, with a dose of antibiotic now and then. The exponential growth we see in the human population going to 7 billion uh, is, is something that appears like it will go on forever. And, and that's the way what we think of this. But most things in biology follow an S-shaped curve, whereas you run to the maximum of resources, things le level out. Uh, also, this um, discussion about expanding average life expectancy, like the average uh, time until we d would die, is getting longer. It has been getting longer for the last thousand years or so. But the maximum life expectancy hasn't changed at all. So the, um, the way that people die from bad nutrition or from um, infectious diseases uh, has, has been improving by hygiene and, and, and better nutrition. 
but the maximum life expectancy of how long a person would live uh, it to the maximum hasn't really changed. And so it's a statistical uh, misperception to say that longer average life expectancy will change our life expectancy beyond 120 years anytime soon with the technology that we're playing with now. You can see on this chart, antibiotics just came in at World War II. Um, and near the end of this chart, uh, you can see that the mortality rate is starting to increase slightly. And maybe this is a trend that we should pay attention to. Where are we going to uh, solve this problem? Well, some of the ancient antibiotics uh, that uh, maybe were in the intestines of King Tut or in the intestines of our thin neighbor might be a good choice. But um, just to summarize, uh, humans are start out as human DNA. We eat food to live. You have to eat uh, life to live. And you become a mix of bacteria and human. And uh, there's going to be more humans that live in cities. These cities are like complex organisms. But uh, this may be an evolutionary process that we're in the middle of. And it's hard to see things when you're in the middle of them. But we're moving from the primordial soup to being bags of microbes ourselves to perhaps a complex organism where we're simply um, a microbe inside the internet. Thank you.